That's Josh. And it's all love, people. Back together again. We're all good. That's amazing. All right. So. Wouldn't look like it sucked anyway. Oh, you. Me. Hi, I'm Jake. And I'm Shelby. Welcome to Deep Dive, where we dive deep into told and untold stories. If you've heard about it, it's probably in a deep dive. Now, today we are going to be diving deep into the cult classic Nickelodeon live action sitcom, Drake and Josh. The highly problematic Drake and Josh reboot that almost happened, but never did, for shocking reasons. And finally, the real truth behind the tumultuous and one sided friendship between Drake Bell and Josh Peck. So grab your life vest and comfy sneakers because we're diving deeper than we have before into the dark, dark world of Drake and Josh. Speaking of comfy sneakers, today's sponsor is Vessi. Vessi sneakers will change your life and have your back in any weather. You know, like when you're walking in the rain or step in a big puddle in the grass and your sneaker and socks get all wet. Well, there is no worse feeling than soggy socks. That's why I love Vessi sneakers. Now, not only are they 100% waterproof, they also keep your feet dry all day long. So Vessi sneakers are my go-to shoe that I have right next to my front door. Vessi's are made from Dymatex, a dual climate knit material, keeping those toesies cool in the summer, but also warm in the winter. They are so lightweight and breathable, it doesn't feel like they should be waterproof but they are. I live in a city where driving isn't the norm and you have to walk every day to grab your coffee and groceries. I love my Vessies in the style everyday classic. I can slip them on quickly and I'm out the door to run my errands, knowing my feet will be dry and comfy all day. So get your bestie a pair of Vessies this holiday season. They would make the perfect gift under the tree and for your loved one's feet. Check out Vessi's holiday sale at Vessi.com slash deep dive and get the style and size you want now before they sell out. Now, if you miss the sale, use our code deep dive for 15% off your entire order. And thank you again to Vessi for sponsoring this video. Now, speaking of feet, let's get back to the Nickelodeon show, Drake and Josh. Jared Drake Bell was born on June 27, 1986, in Newport Beach, California. When Drake was just five years old, his father, Joe Bell, realized Drake had a knack for impersonating people he had seen on television, and he asked Drake if he wanted to be an actor. Soon after, Drake started booking commercials in small roles, but by 1994, he appeared in the very popular show, Home Improvement. Uh, little Pete, about that swing set. Yes, Mr. Toolman? How, how would you feel if I took that old one back that has a lot of splinters in it and built you a brand new one. Now, Tim, that's not really necessary. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> is it going to have a teeter-totter? It was only up from there as he continued to appear in popular films like Jerry Maguire and shows such as Seinfeld. Hey, Jerry, remember Frogger? I used to be so into this game. Getting that frog across the street was my entire life. <laughs> yeah, and then you went on to... That's a good game. Double jump! Eat the fly! Eat it! Thanks a lot. Yeah, beat it, punk. By 1999, Drake had built a pretty impressive resume for a 13-year-old, so it was a no-brainer to cast Drake as a regular on the new Nickelodeon live-action sketch comedy, The Amanda Show, created by Dan Schneider. The Amanda Show was a spin-off from All That, with the main host and star being Amanda Bynes. It was a variety show where the starring kids really got to showcase their comedy, ad-libbing, and acting abilities. Kids, what do you want for breakfast? Meatloaf! Cereal! Meatloaf! Whoop dee dee! Have a bowl of beef! Huh? Who are you? I'm Loaf, and I'm here to tell you about my youngtastic new cereal, Meatloaf Crunch! <laughs> Who's there? A meatloaf! A meatloaf! <laughs> oh, I hit you now with a meatloaf! <laughs> <laughs> Just one year later in the year 2000, a new guy by the name of Josh Peck would be cast on The Amanda Show. I did my first movie for Nickelodeon because I would constantly audition because I was like, Nickelodeon, you want what I'm selling. You may not know it yet, but I've got your secret sauce. <laughs> and I did this movie called Snow Day, which was like with Chevy Chase and all these people. And I'm making this guy laugh one day, like doing some of my old shtick. And my mom saddles up to me and being the good Jewish mother she is, she goes, yo, you know, you're making laugh. That's the president of Nickelodeon. Like, tell him you want to be on The Amanda Show. And I did. And nine months later, I get a call 
saying, I'm flying you and your mom to California and you're gonna start on this show. At first, Drake was a little concerned that Josh being hired on might mean less sketches and roles for himself, but soon he saw how funny Josh was and became excited to work alongside him. Joshua Michael Peck was born on November 10th, 1986 in New York City and raised by his mother, Barbara Peck. As a kid, Josh had a lot of charisma and was a natural at comedy. From a young age, his manager told him to utilize that comedy as a platform to break into acting. And by the age of eight years old, Josh Peck was doing stand-up comedy. The other night I was at a comedy club here in New York and I saw this next comic. Guess what? He's only 10. Please welcome Josh Peck. <laughs> Everybody, how you doing? Good. You know, when I got the call from the Rosie show, honestly, I was a little nervous. You know how you older people out there, when you're nervous, you binge, you booze. Me, I go to my favorite ice cream parlor, ask for a three scoop sundae whipped cream hot fudge and nuts. But I say, hold the cherry, I'm trying to cut back. A lot of people, they come up to me and they ask, Josh, booby, baby, how'd you get into the business? Let me tell you a little bit about myself. I'm the son of a single parent. I was born during the Great Depression. My mother's. You know how the Chinese, they discovered, um, pasta but the italians perfected it that's what i do something happens and then i perfect it and put it in my act and just like his manager said josh was able to break into acting but was typically cast as the quote funny fat kid come on everybody please stop get back in the house jeffrey yeah get back inside there's an unfinished bag of bugles in there for you <laughs> tell your fat son to mind his fat business that's it you bastard Whoa! Who is it? Uh, just me, Spider. Hey, go away, fat boy. I said go away, fat boy! Okay, okay. I'll, I'll see you later. The Amanda Show was Josh's biggest break yet. Drake and Josh became fast friends and would regularly do sketches together on and off the show for two years. Okay, so how do we play? Here, I'll show you. Okay, now what? Now. Okay, is it my turn yet? No, that's game. Hey, I got it. He's got it. <laughs> okay, chicken. What did you say? Chicken. 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 Their comedic chemistry would become a launching pad for a whole new show that would take both of their careers to the next level. As The Amanda Show was ending, Dan Schneider, who at the time created all of the live action shows for Nickelodeon, got a call from executives saying they needed a new show idea and were hoping for a buddy comedy. Dan was on the set of The Amanda Show when Drake and Josh were doing a sketch. The script only said, fight over a shrimp, with no further instruction. Drake and Josh completely ad-libbed this entire scene when Steve Malaro, a writer and producer for Nickelodeon, turned to Dan Schneider and said, there is your buddy comedy right there. Hey, shrimp. Well, I want it. No, I want it. Give it. Soon after, the sitcom Drake and Josh would be created and a pilot would be filmed so they could pitch the show. Whoa, 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 whoa. we're not breaking up. We're never breaking up. As a matter of fact, we're getting married. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> now it's my turn to kiss you. Now it's my turn to throw up. Okay, Megan, we're going out. You be sweet, all right? Yes, Mommy. Hey, Megan, don't let Josh and Drake give you a hard time. You know how boys can be. I'll be okay. 
That's my little princess. Good night. No, 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 no. He's really good. He really is. I taught him everything he knows. Here, I'll show you. Toss me the rock. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come in. Nickelodeon, however, decided to shelve the show for an entire year in favor of the Nickelodeon show Romeo, which released in 2003. But just a year later, Nickelodeon picked up interest again in Drake and Josh. But since an entire year had passed, they needed to reshoot the pilot as Miranda Cosgrove, who was cast to play Drake and Josh's sister, grew up in that year, and they needed to change the actor who played the father. After the new pilot was shot, Nickelodeon was still skeptical, only giving Drake and Josh six episodes for the first season to test how the show would perform. But little did they know, Drake and Josh would end up turning into a cult classic. Drake and Josh premiered January 11th, 2004 on Nickelodeon to 3.2 million viewers, which was Nickelodeon's highest rated series premiere in nearly a decade. It was official, the Nickelodeon renaissance had begun, and despite Nickelodeon's skepticism at first, Drake and Josh quickly became one of the top 10 most watched cable shows and the top rated live action series among children aged 2 to 11 years old. Drake and Josh would carve out its own lane in the entertainment industry and define an entire entire era of children's programming. Marketing research was showing that young boys and girls were more drawn to products and advertising if they saw older teenagers and young adults using them. So in the 2000s, Nickelodeon was looking for just that kind of renaissance in the network's live action programming. Coming off of The Amanda Show and Moody's Point, Dan Schneider was veering toward much older themes. And with the popularity of Teen Nick's airing of Canadian teen drama Degrassi, Nickelodeon was getting edgier and edgier. So with Drake and Josh, the theme was set in high school, and the characters were written to deal with somewhat edgier themes and punchlines. How adults relate to what kids want and in many ways dictate what kids want through what they decide is okay for a children's show. Well, I, I, I don't know. I'm surprised we got a, with a lot of the stuff that we got away with on the show because we were a kids show you know i mean there's scenes where i would sit down on an uh, on an airplane and i get the middle seat and i get to sit between two hot girls and i'm like oh all right and i've never met them and i turn to one and i start making out with her and then i look at the other one and i shrug and i start making out with her and i mean i'm like this is this is nickelodeon like how this is not mtv this is not showtime this is not hbo like how is this okay? But all right. And it, and it aired and they made it. Josh was cast as the comedic relief, but also as the stereotypical, quote, fat, goofy kid character. And Drake was cast as the, quote, rebellious, handsome musician. 
Together, their chemistry would take prime time by storm and would cause the second golden age to dawn on Nickelodeon since the 90s. What's the Nickelodeon machine like? Mm. It's, you know, it's changed so much since like when we were there, because we were, I, I'm sort of proud of the fact, like I feel like we were the last of the, like all that Keenan and Kel, yeah. Amanda yeah. show. Um, so back then, you know, there was no social media. It wasn't like we got these kids young and then we're going to make them pop stars and superstars and build this huge thing. It was just kind of like, yeah, kid, like you're great. Come do your job and, and that's it. But this time, the shows would have even more longevity and be even more successful than the last. This was only the beginning, and Drake Bell and Josh Peck were officially celebrities. Now, once Nickelodeon saw the success of Drake and Josh, the show would renew for more seasons with at least 14 episodes per season. Unlike shows that decrease in views and ratings as the show runs, Drake and Josh defied the odds and actually got more popular with each season. Now, in 2006, season three would premiere, and Drake and Josh had been working together on set day in and day out for six years. Now, Drake Bell has always described Josh Peck as a brother to him, saying that he was even closer to Josh than his own brothers, since they essentially grew up on set together. Drake also always had a dream that Josh would be the Jerry Lewis to his Dean Martin. He wanted them to be the new age comedy duo. Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis got started performing together at the Atlantic City's 500 Club. Dean Martin sang on stage, much like Drake would perform. And Jerry Lewis was the goofy one, much like Josh, who would dress as a busboy and run around breaking plates, interrupting Dean Martin's performance in a comedic way. Very much. The problem with this was Josh didn't want to be the Jerry Lewis to Drake's Dean Martin. Josh was over being the goofy sidekick, and he was tired of being typecasted as the quote, funny fat kid. Drake and Josh were now both nearing 20 years old, and Josh needed to seriously consider his future in acting, and how he could break out as a more serious actor. Between seasons three and four, Josh lost around 110 pounds, saying that it was quote, now or never. If he wanted to get lead roles in movies, this is what he needed to do. Complained about your weight, like any producers or directors, or they just embrace it. Like, yeah, let him be the uh, overweight kid. Oh, they loved it. I mean, I was, especially in the early 2000s, like I was fulfilling a, a niche, like a thing, especially in like YA or kids TV, there was always the fat friend or the fat bully. And like, that was a, a big part that, was sort of my inspiration or, or motivation to lose weight was like, if I really want to act, I'm being relegated and stereotyped into these like two parts. And it doesn't seem like the writing parts for people like me. That's anything more than this. Right. I've always resisted being defined by, by like, that's what I hate. You know, I, I, I don't hate it. It is what it is now, but like, I hated being the kid actor, the child actor. Cause I knew that that triggered in people's brains, like for every Zendaya or 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 Jodie Foster. There were a thousand other kids that just you know completely nosedived in front of the public. And so I'm like, I don't want to be in that class. I just want to be an actor. I don't want to be the fat funny guy. I just want to be an actor amongst actors. Right. While Drake and Josh were filming the fourth and final season of their show, Drake, who was 20 years old, would move in with his then girlfriend Melissa Lingafault, who was only 16 years old at the time. She would even appear in his music video for the song, I Know, which is a song on Drake's second album that just released called It's Only Time. This was his first album with a major record label, Universal Motown Records. The album debuted at number 81 on the Billboard Hot 200, but in Mexico, it was far more successful, reaching number four in its charts. I'm gonna brag about you for a minute. You're an actor, and you were the star of Drake and Josh. Yep. But you're also a singer. Of course, Jake, Drake and Josh is on Nickelodeon. You're a singer, and your album, It's Only Tom, hit stores yesterday, correct? Yes. So do people know you more as an actor or more as a musician and a singer? Or do they just uh, know you as both and just, Drake the, Bell? No, it's it's funny. It's really cool, because uh, lately it's been more the music and everything, so it's it's really exciting. Ah, so that's cool. Yeah. They like you more for your talent of singing. Ah, uh, yeah. I, I, okay. Every girl loves a guy who can sing. <laughs> I think. Drake and Josh ended at the height of its popularity in 2007. It was bittersweet, the end of an era. In the final episode called Really Big Shrimp, Drake and Josh would recreate the very skit that started it all. Hey, where'd you get the big shrimp? Oh, some guy, uh, Nick Mateo from Spin City Records, sent three dozen of them over for you guys. Well, then why are you and your friends eating them? Because we like shrimp. Move. Oh, great. It was just one shrimp. 
from the buzzards. <laughs> oh, well. Hey, wait. What? I want the shrimp. I want it. I want it. Would you give it? Hey, hey, no, 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 give it to me. I give it to me. No, no, I want the shrimp. Please no, 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 step away from this. I enjoy it. Hey, come on. Would you, I will pay you $10. $10. I will give you $10 for the shrimp. Would you just move it away? I've been known to enjoy conversation. Please, no, you will not enjoy that shrimp with sauce while I'm around. Come on. Stop it. Stop it. With the end of the Drake and Josh era, a new one would emerge as Miranda Cosgrove got her very own show that would debut in 2007 called iCarly. Drake would go on tour in the summer of 2007 to support his album release, and Josh needed to immediately find work. Nickelodeon only paid Drake and Josh an average of $15,000 per episode. And of course, since it's a kids' network, they were not offering any kind of royalties. During the years of Drake and Josh, Josh was making just enough to comfortably support his mom and himself. Josh very quickly scored a leading role in the movie The Wackness alongside Ben Kingsley and Mary-Kate Olsen. The Wackness really showcased Josh's range as an actor outside of Nickelodeon. But just one year later, the cast of Drake and Josh would get together one last time for their fans to make the Christmas movie Merry Christmas, Drake and Josh. What was it like getting back together though on set? It, I mean, for me it was, it was like riding a bike, because I, I, I don't know, it's just, working with Josh, it's so comfortable, and we, we've been doing it for so long, so, you know, just it was, we just kind of got back into the groove. How long was the, has the break been, since we're actually doing shows? About two years? It was sort of like a bad breakup, and then we came back together, we Facebook friended each other, <laughs> yeah. and, uh, everything was good. What kind of roles are you looking, what would you love people to offer you now, that is so different than Drake and Josh? I mean, you're gonna do you, you're doing music, yeah, obviously. Yeah, you're I mean, touring. You were in Mexico, which I know that's very important to you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm working on a new album now and and stuff. I mean, as far as films, I mean, I don't know. I just I love acting, so anything really. I don't. Yeah, I mean, I was lucky enough to do a film called The Wackness uh, last year with Sir Ben Kingsley. That was uh, definitely something that uh, that's in a different light than Drake and Josh, and just things that challenge me, and uh, and that I can you know be shown in a different light. Hey, park there. Uh, no, I want to find a spot closer to the door. Why? Because if we park far away, then we might have to walk too far and I could get sweaty. And <laughs> I will not meet Oprah with pitch stick. Just park the car. Oh, would you let go of my no, wheel? Park the hey, come on! Hey, watch it, watch it! Oh! 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 As the years went by, both Drake and Josh would continue on in their careers separately. Josh would voice Eddie in the Ice Age franchise and go on to voice Casey Jones in the Nickelodeon animated series Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Drake Bell would also continue to work with Nickelodeon, playing Timmy Turner in the live-action Fairly Odd Parents movie, as well as voice various animated characters for video games, TV shows, and films. Although they had severed their career ties, Drake always expressed in interviews that he hoped they could reunite and continue their career career together as a comedy duo. Drake even stated it wasn't his choice for them to go their separate ways, it was Josh's. And I was so excited that we had this like buddy comedy thing going, and then when we, you know, spun off onto Drake and Josh, it was like m my dream come true. You know, I was like, oh my god, I get to work with this, this brilliant kid who's gonna like, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna do this show, and then we're gonna spin off, and we're gonna go and do everything that Martin Lewis did. We're gonna go and make movies, and we're gonna go and do this and that and the other, and, um, but yeah, no, it didn't really work out that way. <laughs> no, it didn't. He says that, um, you know, we decided to go separate ways. You weren't in on that decision. I never was. No. I mean, I thought we could just do so much cool stuff, you know? Yeah. Despite going in separate directions, to the outside world, it appeared Josh and Drake were still friends that supported each other. Hey Josh, you said four million followers. Josh was quickly becoming a massive Vine star with millions of followers. Many celebrities at this time didn't really utilize social media in the way Josh Peck did. Josh used Vine to connect with Drake and Josh fans, make new fans, become friends with some of the most famous internet personalities, and to keep growing his career. And as Vine inevitably died, Josh continued his social media fame on YouTube as part of the Vlog Squad, regularly appearing in David Dobrik vlogs. 
Trish, you've never had sex on camera before, have you? Oh, is this vanilla? <laughs> One day, Trisha's gonna expose us and end all our careers. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm fine. You're fine? Yeah, I mean, mine ended years ago. <laughs> During this time, Drake would continue his venture into the world of music, releasing his third album in 2014 titled Ready, Steady, Go. Josh Peck and the rest of the cast of Drake and Josh would even show up to Drake's 2014 drama-filled album release party in support of Drake. Go only hit 182 on the Billboard Hot 200. It hit number five on the Top 100 Mexico. This is when Drake really started to realize that his core audience was in Mexico and began touring in Mexico where his concerts would completely sell out. Josh Peck and Drake Bell's acting careers would cross paths again in 2015. A new show called Grandfathered was in development starring John Stamos. Both Drake Bell and Josh Peck auditioned for the role of Gerald, John Stamos's character's newly discovered adult son. However, Josh Peck beat out Drake for the role. What was Grandfather? Is that something? That, that, he, is, that was his TV show that he did with uh, John oh. Stamos, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha. Um, which is funny, I auditioned for, by the way. Um, so when Josh got it, I was like, oh, no way. Yeah. We um, were like, yeah. The show only lasted one season before getting canceled by Fox, but before it ended, Josh Peck told ET Online that Drake Bell was at the top of his list for a guest star on Grandfathered, saying, quote, he, Drake, better do it. I'll just text him and say, keep the next six months open for me, will ya? I would love it, and if he was available and open to it, nothing would make me happier. And for the first time in seven years, Drake and Josh would be briefly reunited on a 2016 episode of the sitcom Grandfather. You know, you remind me of my stepbrother. Oh, but is he awesome? No, no, he's just in jail for stalking Oprah. Anyway, let's get inside so you guys can buy me dinner. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Hug me, <laughs> brother! <laughs> yeah, it's a tech industry, but I have to do business for jerks. At least sister gave us double our seed money. <laughs> When we went to do Grandfathered, his show that he did with John Stamos on Fox, I did a guest appearance. And after we did it, he pulled me aside and said, man, I was nervous because we haven't worked together for about almost 10 years now. Haven't done a scene together. And man, we jumped, we fell right back into it. Huh? I'm like, dude, I told you, man. I'm like, we, there's something there between us that... You know, I, it's once in a lifetime in this business. I mean, it's a, it's a Martin and Lewis. Just one year later in 2017, Josh Peck and Drake Bell would make headlines everywhere, but not for the nostalgic reunion everyone had been hoping for. On June 17, 2017, Josh Peck married his longtime partner, Paige O'Brien, in Malibu. Drake and Josh fans quickly noticed the following day as photos began to become available online that Drake Bell was not at the wedding. Shortly after, Drake tweeted out, quote, when you're not invited to the wedding, the message is clear. He also tweeted out, true colors have come out today. Message is loud and clear. Ties are officially cut. I'll miss you, brother. As well as always remember where you came from. Drake did end up deleting these tweets, but it was far too late. The fans and the media already got a hold of them and Drake not being invited to Josh's wedding became a viral headline. Josh Peck got married over the weekend without Drake Bell by his side and his former TV brother is feeling some type of way about it. I never thought it would be so simple, but I guess Josh found a way to cut ties with Drake. Over the weekend, photos from Josh and Paige's wedding surfaced on the interwebs. Josh's grandfather co-star John Stamos managed to get an invite but the actors Drake and Josh family members were nowhere to be found. And when Drake caught wind of the photographic evidence, she has hit the fan. Did John Stamos just shade Drake Bell? The 53-year-old actor took to Instagram on Saturday to share this sweet pic embracing his grandfathered co-star Josh Peck. John captioned the pic, I got invited to the wedding and I didn't even want to go. Hashtag honeymoon. Now your Drake and Josh co-star Josh Peck just got married. Did you go to the wedding? Um, no, I didn't go. <laughs> what did you think about Drake's tweets that he didn't get invited? He was very miffed. <laughs> Um, I'm just happy for Josh. I hope he has a good um, marriage. <laughs> it's know, exciting. Right? It's just like crazy to me that so much time has passed. Like so many of my friends and people that are on Nickelodeon with me are married now. It's, it's crazy. 
Josh Peck responds to former co-star Drake Bell's tweets about his wedding. Spoiler alert, Josh is really hurt about the whole ordeal. An insider for Us Weekly reveals, at Josh's wedding this weekend, some guests were asking Josh Peck where Drake was. Josh told everyone that he and Drake hadn't spoken in three years. They would tweet each other back on social media a couple times a year, but never actually spoke. Josh was really hurt. They aren't close anymore, and Josh had a very small wedding. Now, I know you guys did have a little bit of beef. Mm -hmm. Not too long ago. You know, you know this is gonna come up. Yeah, of course, it always does. So, yeah. you know, just to recap, he did not he invite me to his wedding. He didn't invite you to his yeah. wedding. Clearly you were very upset about that. Rightfully As, so. Rightfully so, and you tweeted about it. I wasn't like so upset, it was just kinda weird. I was like, man, I've known this. I don't know, I just thought I, I don't know, we were bros, we've been friends for 20 years. I don't know, I just thought it was and then you know, there were people that were at the wedding that you're like, you know, why I'm are like, you there? I'm not, not testing them. I'm like, yo, how's the fish? So, I do have to ask. You are a celebrity. You know that people are following every move you make on social media. You chose to tweet about this. Mm -hmm. Did you intend to cause sort of no, some that's the thing. It friction? Must been, it must have been such a slow news day. I was like, I was like just <laughs> praying for Trump to tweet something that day. I was like, this is ridiculous <laughs> because I, I couldn't. It was the biggest news ever. Did he ever tell you why he didn't invite you? Did you ever get a he reason? Like me. Stop. Is that no, really what yeah. it is? Yeah, and, and the extra chicken would have been really expensive. It was like another seven ninety five or something like that. Drake and Josh fans realizing their favorite TV brothers aren't as close as they thought very quickly turned on Josh during what was supposed to be one of the happiest times of his life. Josh's social media accounts were being entirely spammed with the hashtag we are all Drake. The onslaught of hate and spam continued for weeks, even being directed at Josh's wife Paige, calling her Yoko Ono. Yoko Ono was once accused of splitting up the Beatles, so fans were seemingly accusing Paige of splitting up the comedy duo Drake and Josh. Josh continued to remain silent up until he uploaded a vlog showing himself confronting Drake at the 2017 MTV VMAs in August, where they appear to reunite, even chalking their feud up to just some brotherly fighting. <laughs> Holy sh Come on. What's up, buddy? Is this happening right now live as we, is this really right now live? Stream, stream live, right now. Oh it's my happening. God. Please Wait, don't is this Facebook streaming? to be nice to me. Oh my God, Please. it's not even my fault. <laughs> Just tell Facebook to listen, be nice to me. Listen, listen, lay off. Thank you, you heard that, Facebook, it's all good. Chill out. We love lay you. Lay off, man. I, all right, I got wow. 100 bucks for you. Uh, Sweet. It was so bad. This is real life. This is it, live right now. You're welcome, childhood. Just feels right. But so how did that all get solved, and how did that work out? It's just love. It's always been love. It's always going to be love. You can't, you can't break us up. Right. You can't break up brothers. You can't, you can't break up. You can't break America's heart. No, you can't. She deserves. She deserves us together. That's Drake. That's Josh. And it's all love, people. Back together again. We're all good. That's amazing. All right. So. Wedding looked like it sucked anyway. Oh, you. For me? You know what? Mom never even liked you. She's not our mom. We're not on a TV show. <laughs> you little backstory about David Dobrik. He thinks we're going to get him back right now, but I'm actually giving him the greatest gift of his life because while he's a bad person, he helps all our careers. Oh, uh, <laughs> get the followers out of this thing. <laughs> yeah. How far are we fallen? Okay, remember when we had a TV show on like television? Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh! One more fact. One more fact. Right. No, no, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, 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 okay. I never thought that it'd be so simple, but. <laughs> Josh, she was a dick for not inviting you to the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's the best day of my life. To the outside world, it almost seemed as if the wedding incident brought Drake and Josh closer than they had been in years. Their reunion on the David Dobrik vlog received almost 20 million views, and fans, now more than ever, wanted a reboot of the cult classic Drake and Josh. Uh, are there any real talks about a reunion? I know you've said you'd be open to it if the story was right. Is that something that, that is really in the works? You know, you gotta talk to Peck. You gotta talk yeah. to Josh. I would love to okay. do it. I would love to. I mean, I, I, I always say in this situation, I'm the John Lennon of the Beatles. Whenever John Lennon was asked about the reunion of the Beatles, yes. you know, he was like, oh, just let us know when the rehearsal is. Absolutely, right. I'll be there. And then every time Paul was asked, you know, he would write official letters to the press saying, you know, no, the Beatles are not getting back together. Stop asking. That was, a, it's in the past. Like, we're never getting back together. I'm the John Lennon of that situation. Just give me a call and let me know. If our schedules permit, then, then I think we gotta get together. Right. But yeah, no, um, Josh is busy doing stuff. 
I'm sensing some shade. No, no shade at all. <laughs> I love the kid. We're just super, the thing is, is we're just so busy. Like, it's that thing where, you know, for the fans, everyone's like, yo, I mean, we hear it every day. I'm sure he does too. It's like, where's Josh? Where's Drake? Where's mm -hmm. Josh? Where's Drake? It's like, I mean, I hate to break it to you, but, you know, I'm constantly on tour. He's constantly at David Dobrik's house. And, you know, there's like, not a lot of time to really <laughs> hang out. I got you. It would appear Josh Peck wasn't quite ready to team back up with Drake. This could be because Josh was extremely busy at the time. His YouTube vlog channel was taking off. He was enjoying his first year of marriage. Plus, Josh and his wife Paige were expecting their first baby in 2018. Drake Bell was also busy embarking on an entirely new identity. Drake's music has always been far more popular in Mexico than in the United States. In a 2018 interview, Drake said, he had never sung in Spanish. Quote, I have to sing in Spanish for the fans down there. It's been too long. They've been so loyal to me and I haven't given them anything in their language. Drake released the song Fuego Lento, which is sung partially in Spanish and in English. The song was wildly successful. Drake would go on to even change his name on social media to Drake Campana, which means bell in Spanish. And the music video for Fuego Lento was shot in Mexico City and has amassed almost 27 million views views, making it Drake's most successful music video in over a decade. Hey, ¿cómo va tu español, Drake? Eh, <laughs> más okay. o menos, yeah, más, más o, o menos. menos. Because you put some tweet, one tweet uh, a month ago, that you said that your all the social media is going to be in Spanish, yeah. right? Dice, mis redes sociales ahora solo estarán en español, no más inglés. I was, uh, I was on the airplane heading home from Mexico, and uh, I was going to write a tweet, and I was like, why am I writing this in English? Everybody that wants to read this is not, I should just write everything in Spanish from now on. And then I got the idea and I, uh, I wrote it and then I took off and I landed and it went, <laughs> just exploded. And how does that happen? In, in some point you have more audience in Mexico and on, on all Latin America than in, here in North America. Yeah, it, it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. Um, I guess from, from the show, you know, Drake and Josh, Drake and Josh. And <laughs> And then I had an album that came out years ago. We flew to Mexico and we had a concert at a Auditorio Nacional. Yeah. And I'd never heard of it or ever been there. And I, I got there and I saw the auditorium and I said, no, no way. <laughs> it, for me, like, we're playing here? Yes. And we sold it out and, and uh, multiple times. And, uh, and just from there, I've, I've, I've just been, you know, embraced so, so lovingly by everybody there. So uh, I felt like I, I needed to give something back or do something specifically for them. Um, and so I wrote Fuego Lento. Mm -hmm. And... Thank you. Thank you. Hermano! Hermano, creo! Yo espero que estar en el estudio! In 2019, talks of a Drake and Josh reboot started swirling through the news, and just as the rumors were circulating, Drake Bell started to appear on Josh's vlog channel. So cool, you haven't been having a lot of s*** <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. I don't know whether people are going to be like, this is the best video ever made. Oh my god, you ruined uh, our childhood. Yeah, oh, both. all of the, yeah, both. Definitely both. Sorry, guys. Get ready, because yeah. that's what we're basically on a ruining your childhood. <laughs> yeah, th yeah, it's going to be a Started with basically. my wedding, now it's happening yeah. in this video, and here we go. We got some good cooked up for you. Yeah, you'll see. Now, Drake would confirm these rumors at the iHeartRadio Music Awards, stating, We're working on something. I'm excited. I think we have a great idea. Now, People Magazine reported that the reboot would be aimed at a more adult audience and that it will be way more creative. You made big news this week that Drake and Josh reboot is in the works with a great idea. What can you tell us about the reboot? Oh my gosh. Well, I don't know if it's, I wouldn't call it a reboot. I think it's just an opportunity for Drake and I to be working together again. And nice. obviously we love each other and we were able to make such an impact on people. So any chance to do something dope together, um, it's really exciting for me. So it's going to be good. Y'all, y'all will like it. Well, you know, Josh has come up with a really cool idea. We, we, we've been talking and the thing that's been keeping us from just jumping into, oh, hey, everyone's doing reboots. Let's let's get back together and, and jump on that bandwagon is me and Josh want it to be something creative and it has to be something that, you know, it can't be Drake and Josh in college where, you know, yeah. now it's the same character. It was, it, it, it's got to be 
you know, we don't want to do a fuller house, you know. Um. The Drake and Josh reboot was going to be entirely different. It appeared that Josh was primarily taking the reins and creative control of the project. The new show was going to be called Josh and Drake. Allegedly, in the new sitcom, Josh was going to be a very successful real estate agent, and Drake was going to be a failed musician. Now, the plot essentially was that Drake would be playing at the quinceanera for the daughter of, quote, one of Mexico's cartel families. We did pitch a show. Yeah. We pitched a Drake and Josh reboot show mm -hmm. called... Josh, Josh and Drake. Drake. Let's talk about how it came about. Josh came over and he had written a script. So I read the script and I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't, wasn't the best. <sighs> I just have a lot of fans in Mexico and I, I we, we. Okay, we, we, we're getting into it. I mean, he like he wanted you to be an actor and he wanted to be writer, producer, executive producer. Like, um, so I think something that Josh doesn't know is why we ended up pulling out from the reboot. First of all, this Josh and Drake re reboot, the idea could have been really great. The problem is, is that Josh wrote Drake as a failed musician, and Josh wrote himself as a real estate agent. We're supposed to be playing ourselves, and I get that, so you're making, you, like he totally parodied my actual life. Yeah, not only did he, not only, but, I don't want to say parody, but, like he was, he was like making fun of your life, like. The way it was written, he, there were some things in there that basically, it I mean, was just so stereotypical. We can just read some. I'm going to read the script. Uh, but before I get into this, what I'm going to say is that Josh hates Drake and Josh. Yeah. The first time that I that I realized that really was when I read the script. I didn't know he hated the show so much. Um, you guys have a trademark saying, right? Yeah. What is that? Hug me, brother. You know, it would really hurt a fan's feelings if you said, <laughs> I didn't say it. Um, hug yourself, F-head. So there's the opening scene where, you know, Josh is a, he, he's a, a real estate agent and he goes in and he is, is, uh, dressing a, a, a house and getting it ready and he, and the and, people and, who and, go to buy the house, they recognize him yeah, and, and they're like, like oh, Hey, aren't you Josh that guy from Drake and Josh? Yeah. And, and then he goes, hug me brother. And then Josh gets in the car and goes, hug yourself F head. Um, and that so alone that was the first just, thing well, that I was that, like I, we can't open that our, alone our was show my like that first red flag because you just said F you to the entire audience Josh fan base yeah but then we go into Mexico right yeah. after that yeah right after that line oh really so, yeah so oh wow hug yourself F head and then it goes to and, and then opening of the show Josh and Drake then immediately Such as a we good title. open the show, we're in Mexico. Drake performs at a quinceanera, a Latin celebration of a girl's 15th birthday. It's not your typical quince. This newly 15 year old Elena is the daughter of the biggest drug kingpin in Mexico. Really? Um, her father, Enrique, the head of the cartel, sits in the middle of the party at a table surrounded by guards and beautiful women. Really? Uh, think Escobar Chapo. Drake uh. is on stage backed by a mariachi band uh. while the birthday girl watches the girlfriends in the front row. People drink copious amounts of alcohol. Oh, and this is my favorite part, and ingest other illicit substances at a 15-year-old's birthday party. Yeah, okay, like that, because that's, so, what, cause that's oh, what they do there, right? Well, Drake finishes singing the theme song to Drake and Josh, in parentheses, I found a way, and gets a big round of applause. Right when I read that, I was like, man, I can't- We can't do that. Represent- but it gets worse. So then they go into a gunfight and then they don't want to pay Drake, which is also another terrible stereotype. Yeah. Um, and then they don't pay him. He gets stuck in Mexico. He doesn't have any money. Which is which is a direct. Well, like, it's just a direct insult on what, what we've I've been built building in Mexico for years. <laughs> and what I've worked he has on and no cultivated. No idea what and... we've 
been doing, but that's yeah. fine. I just want to know why like, was could he you... a real estate agent and you were a failed musician? Like, why wasn't he a failed YouTube star or Viner? And then you could be like, I don't. Why was it <sighs> something like closer? To I don't know. Maybe, like, I told him I was like, dude, know? make me make me a failed actor in New York. Like, yeah. And I'm sleeping on your couch, and you're like trying um, to be an actor too, or but... something. Drake appeared to fully pull out of the reboot as the script was culturally insensitive, and Josh allegedly refused to make changes to the storyline. Thus, right then and there, the project was nuked, completely lifeless in the water. Drake and Josh without Drake would be impossible. So not only would fans never see the reboot reach their TV screens, but Drake and Josh would never reunite again. And it may be a good thing that the reboot never happened, as just one year later in 2020, the first round of allegations started coming out against Drake Bell. Drake Bell denies abuse allegations from his ex-girlfriend, Melissa Lingefeld. The 30-year-old artist who goes by the name Jimmy Ono on TikTok accused the 34-year-old actor of verbal and physical abuse in a video shared on the platform Wednesday, August 12th. First, I would like to start out with saying that I don't really care if anyone believes me as this is my story my life and something that I went through. It wasn't until recently that I actually realized that abuse isn't something that all women have to go through. She said she was 16 years old when they started dating and that she was homeschooled. I moved in with him, I was singing. It wasn't until about a year when the verbal abuse started. And when I say verbal abuse, imagine the worst type of verbal abuse you could ever imagine, and that was what I got. Um, it then turned into physical, hitting, throwing, everything. Um, at the pinnacle of it, he drug me down the stairs of our house in Los Feliz. My face hit every step on the way down. Um, I have photos of this. Then finishing off the video by saying, quote, I don't even want to get into the under girls thing. I mean, but I will. I'm scared. Then in the eight TikToks she's posted since her explosive video, she shared DM conversations she's had with many girls after her story went viral, with tons of girls admitting that they had inappropriate relationships with the star when they were less than 18 years old, as well as two of his other past long-term girlfriends coming forward that they had the same experiences with him. With her finishing off saying that her and Drake Bell's other two long-term girlfriends are consulting with their lawyers to get justice. The singer captioned her video with, this is my truth. I hope this message reaches young girls, she wrote, and that no one has to go through what I did. But Bell slams the claims in a statement to E! News saying, I never abused my ex-girlfriend or did so many of the other things Melissa falsely claimed on her TikTok video. As our relationship ended more than a decade ago, we unfortunately both called each other terrible names as often happens when couples are breaking up. But that is it. He then adds, clearly Melissa still felt close enough to me just last year that she was comfortable reaching out to ask me to provide her with financial support during a tough time, which I did. I do not know if today's behavior is some kind of misguided quest for more money or attention, but I cannot and will not allow these offensive and defamatory allegations to go unchallenged and I am reviewing my legal options. Now, what the public didn't know at the time, as it wouldn't come out until 2021, was that Drake was already under an investigation and had been under investigation since 2018, when an underage fan who was at Drake's 2017 Cleveland concert filed a complaint against Drake Bell with the police. Drake and this underage fan's quote, relationship started years prior to her meeting him at the 2017 concert. They had allegedly been messaging since she was only 12 years old. Drake Bell is facing new legal troubles. The former Nickelodeon star was arrested in Ohio this week on one charge of attempted child endangerment and one charge of disseminating matter harmful to juveniles, according to documents obtained by Access Hollywood. Bell was first indicted in May and pleaded not guilty at his arraignment on Thursday. He is currently free after posting a $2,500 personal bond. According to the spokesperson, Canadian authorities contacted Cleveland police, whose subsequent investigation revealed that the alleged victim attended a concert of Bell's in December 2017, where he allegedly, quote, violated his duty of care and, quote, created a risk of harm to the teen. The pair had allegedly established a relationship years prior, and in the months leading up to the concert, 
Bell allegedly sent her, quote, inappropriate social media messages. Drake Bell would end up pleading guilty to attempted endangering children, a fourth-degree felony, and a misdemeanor charge of disseminating matters harmful to juveniles. He was sentenced to two years probation and 200 hours of community service. Drake would go on to make a statement to his fans, denying the allegations of abuse against the underage fan. Despite allegedly messaging the underage victim since she was 12 years old, Drake did admit to sending inappropriate messages to her that stopped once he asked how old she was years later when she was 15. Drake Bell has been sentenced to two years of probation and 200 hours of community service. According to NBC News, Bell made a statement ahead of his sentencing. He said, quote, Today I accept this plea because my conduct was wrong. I'm sorry that the victim was harmed in any way. That was obviously not my intention. I've taken this matter very seriously. And again, I just want to apologize to her and anyone else who may have been affected by my actions. Also during these legal proceedings, the public got a shocking announcement from Drake. The 35-year-old Nickelodeon actor took to Twitter to reveal he's married and has a child amid his recent legal woes. Bell, who's been calling himself Drake Campana since 2020, tweeted the news in Spanish. The translated message reads, quote, In response to various rumors that are incorrect, I have been married for almost three years and we are blessed to be the parents of a wonderful son. Thank you very much to all my fans around the world for your good wishes. Now, Josh Peck, who has relatively been very silent about Drake and their friendship through the years, wrote a book called Happy People Are Annoying. <laughs> hey, what are, you, what are you reading there? I'm just learning a lot of things about you that I never even knew. You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for not calling me a boob or anything. <laughs> when Josh embarked on the media tour to promote his book, we got a much deeper look into how he views Drake in their years-long, quote, friendship. Drake Bell made headlines recently um, when he was sentenced to two years of probation after pleading guilty. You write about some of this in the book. Um, you say, people ran to get my opinion. They thought I must have a take on this person I'd spent so much time with, when in reality, it'd been years since, we, since we'd talked and even longer since we'd seen each other, which is why alongside everyone else who doesn't know Drake, I was upset by the inexplicable events that unfolded in his life. What was it like writing that portion of the book for you? I think it was, it was important that I basically just, you know, especially in a book that will live on forever, that I was clear about my feelings during that time. And not to quote myself again, but as I said in the book, it, it was upsetting. Josh would even talk about the infamous wedding incident of 2017 and explain his side for the first time on the BFF's podcast. I mean, I, I guess I could tell the story of my wedding. So I get married to my wife and like, I married this good Irish Catholic girl, you know, shout out Josh Catholics. And, uh, uh, you know, and so we have like this small wedding and the dirty little secret, I guess, was like, I knew that Drake and I didn't stay in touch for the 10 years since we had made the show, but no one needed to know that. Like, I was happy to just die with that secret that like, we made this thing that people really love, but maybe we weren't that close. So I didn't invite him to my wedding because I hadn't really talked to him in many, many years. Cut to, I'm getting married that night. And I see these text messages from him, like cursing me out, coming oh, wow. for me. I'm like, on the night of my wedding. Oh. And I'm like, yo, and, and it's delusional. Cause I'm like, bro, it's like we worked at Coffee Bean when we were 16. Like, I'm sorry, I, I'm 31 now. I might've lost your number. He, he was surprised he wasn't invited then? If he's going yeah. bananas on you? He's surprised, but then he takes to the internet and he starts writing these tweets that immediately like catch fire. And so then he like leans in and goes on this press tour about how heartbroken he is. But here's my wife, right? Who's like getting torn down on the internet. And I'm like, she's private and she just got married. Can't you just enjoy this? And I remember that we were at, I was at the Video Music Awards and I see him there and he sees me. And I go up to him like, and this might be the most Sopranos thing I've ever done. And I look at him and I go, go apologize to my wife right now and he goes okay drake and josh is something i'll be synonymous with forever and i'm proud of it and i want to like the guy that my name is attached to forever um but unfortunately you know it just sort of worked out the way that it did do you think he would have invited you to his wedding 
No. What meant the most to me was what this show meant to other people. And because it was in reruns for free forever, <laughs> yeah. like I'll still at 35, having not shot an episode of that for almost 20 years, have new kids and families come up to me and talk about how much they love it. And it's a testament to the show that it sort of had that lasting power. But so no one to me had to ever know that Drake and I weren't exactly close. Right. You don't um, talk to him anymore at all, right? I don't. This upset Drake, and he knew he had to take action. So he and his wife started a podcast called Drake and Janet, and their first and only episode was explaining their side and countering Josh's claims. That's why he's doing press. I yeah. Know I saw he's like on a press tour, and um, and, they're, and they're, talking they're talking about, about a fight we had five, five years, years ago. ago. Yeah. Um, I'm like, but, dude, that was that five show you years how much ago. People, like, need to put you guys together and want you guys together. Josh Peck confronts Drake Bell at VMAs, <laughs> and then he's like, "I had my big soprano moment." Like, oh, big tough guy. No, the like whole e the whole clip the whole clip was like that. He said, "Like, apologize to my wife, like, or something bad or bad happen. things will bad, happen or something." And I was like. I saw him with his camera before he even came up to you. Uh -huh. I whis whispered in your ear, Josh is walking up and he has a camera and he is vlogging you. Mm -hmm. Like, just like be prepared. And literally, yeah, uh, and, and then the, Josh yeah. walks up. Um, we were all smiling, laughing, yeah. like, he did ask you to apologize, yeah, rightfully he did. so. Yeah, yeah. And I and I was ready like I wanted to. Mm -hmm. And he goes, Hey man, you don't need to you don't need to say sorry to me, but you know, I really need you to say sorry to Paige. And I was like, yeah, dude, absolutely. Like, I want to say sorry to Paige, you know? Yeah. Dude, this was an accident, man. It's interesting because, for, well, first off, I, I never texted him cursing him out the night of his wedding because I didn't know that there was a wedding uh, until he posted about it the next day. And that's where I, that's when I got bummed. I mean, I, I was bummed. I tweeted, shouldn't have tweeted. And it was one tweet mm -hmm. and that was it. And I think, you yeah. know, Josh, obviously, you know, it really, it really affected them yeah. that, at that time. And, and I think that now he even is though, able... Even though we got over it, we've hung out since then. Yeah, that we were, we pitched we the were show working together the, on a show yeah. in 2019. Yeah. So I don't know where do it. We're going to do it. Wait a second. So you guys have even hung out since that incident? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we 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 uh, we're gonna do a reboot of jo uh, Drake and Josh called Josh and Drake. Um, oh, I'm so confused. Why is he talking about it like you guys don't get along? Was Josh finally pulling away from Drake and putting the nail in the friendship coffin because of Drake's legal troubles? You know, and I know the past few years have been a little rough. You had some legal issues and stuff. And was Josh maybe trying to distance himself from you because of that? Again, that's just a thought of mine. No, and that's interesting that you say that because we thought that. Or could it be that Josh has never felt the same as Drake? Josh did say he never wanted to be the Jerry Lewis to Drake's Dean Martin, and he held off on the opportunity for a reboot for years. And when it was finally in the works, Josh would try to rewrite the dynamic between Drake and Josh which was classic and at this point also iconic. The Nickelodeon sitcom Drake and Josh may have been a positive core memory for Drake's life, but for Josh, it was seemingly the opposite. As Drake became more and more attached to Josh and accustomed to performing with him, Josh's resentment for his co-star only grew further. Drake was nonchalantly walking to the edge of a melting iceberg with Josh. As he seemingly had no idea, Josh had such a deep resentment for him. As while Drake was the hotshot musician, Josh was always the butt of the joke, the quote fat funny kid who Helen never loved. 